Good afternoon, everyone. Let's now pray the angelus followed by mass. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The angel of the Lord declared unto Mary, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed are the among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Behold the handmaid of the Lord. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed are the among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. And the word was made flesh. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed are the among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Pray for us, O Holy Mary, Mother of God. Let us pray. Pour forth, we beseech thee, O Lord, your grace into your hearts, that as we have known the incarnation of Christ, thy Son, by the message of an angel, so by his passion and cross, we may be brought to the glory of his resurrection through the same Christ, O Lord. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Let's now pray this, uh, begin this Holy Eucharist. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Dear friends, in the liturgy of the word today, Jesus places a definite challenge on all of us. When you hear God's word, what will happen in your word? Your life is going to be happy, joyful, and you will be flourishing in your lives. But the moment we don't hear and put the word of God into action, then we know we may not be able to have the life as we used to listen to God's word. And today I have taken the Mass of Our Lady being the Saturday. We also pray through her intercession as we, go, as we are going through this painful pandemic. We pray for Mother's intervention because Mother prayers are so powerful. So we pray through our Blessed Mother as well that we find a definite solution for the pandemic. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart, Lord have mercy. You came to call sinners, Christ have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us, Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. I offer this Mass for the intention of the Ursuline Lay Association Prayer Group. Grant, Lord God, that we, your servants, may rejoice in unfailing health of mind and body, and through the glorious intercession of the Blessed Mary Ever Virgin, may we be set free from the present sorrow and come to enjoy the eternal happiness. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading taken from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Someone may ask, how are dead people raised? And what sort of body do they have when they come back? They are stupid questions. Whatever you sow in the ground has to die before it is given new life. And the thing that you sow is not what is going to come. You sow a bare grain, say, of wheat or something like that. It is the same with the resurrection of the dead. The thing that is sown is perishable, but what is raised is imperishable. The thing that is sown is contemptible, 
but what is raised is glorious. The thing that is sown is weak, but what is raised is powerful. When it is sown, it embodies the soul, and when it is raised, it embodies the spirit. If the soul has its own embodiment, so does the spirit have its own embodiment. The first man, Adam, as scripture says, became a living soul, but the last Adam has become a life-giving spirit. That is, first the one with the soul, not the spirit, and after that, the one with the spirit. The first man, being from the earth, is earthly by nature. The second man is from heaven. As this earthly man was, so are we on earth. And as the heavenly man is, so are we in heaven. And we, who have been modelled on the earthly man, will be modelled on the heavenly man. The word of the Lord. I will walk in the presence of God with the light of the living. My foes will be put to flight on the day that I call to you. This I know, that God is on my side. I walk in the presence of God with the light of the living. In God, whose word I praise, in the Lord, whose word I praise, in God I trust. I shall not fear. What can mortal man do to me? I will walk in the presence of God with the light of the living. I am bound by the vows I have made you. O oh God, I will offer your praise. For you rescued my soul from death. You kept my feet from stumbling, that I may walk in the presence of God in the light of the living. I will walk in the presence of God with the light of the living. Please stand. Alleluia, alleluia. Happy are they who have kept the word with a generous heart and yield a harvest through perseverance. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. With a large crowd gathering and people from every town finding their way to him, Jesus used this parable. A sower went out to sow his seed. As he sowed, some fell on the edge of the path and was trampled on, and the birds of the air ate it, ate it up. Some seed fell on rock, and when it came up, it withered away, having no moisture. Some seed fell among thorns, and the thorns grew with it and choked it. And some seed fell into rich soil and grew and produced its crop a hundredfold, saying this, saying this he cried, Listen, anyone who has ears to hear. The disciples asked him what this parable might mean, and he said, The mysteries of the kingdom of God are revealed to you. For the rest, there are only parables, so that they may see but, but not perceive, listen but not understand. This then is what the parable means. The seed of the word of God, those on the edge of the path, are people who have heard it, and then the devil comes and carries away the word from their hearts in case they should believe and be saved. Those on the rock are people who, when they first hear it, welcome the word with joy, but these have no rule. They, they believe for a while, and in time of trial, they give up. As for the part of that fell into the thorns, this is people who have heard, but as they go on their way, they are choked by the worries and rich, 
and the riches and the pleasures of life and do not reach maturity. As for the part in the rich soil, this is the people with a noble and generous heart who have heard the word of God and take it to themselves and yield a harvest through their perseverance. And dear friends, the gospel of the Lord. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ Jesus, this is a very familiar parable for all of us, and we would have heard it a number of times in our lives. This familiar parable identifies four possible ways in which we hear the Word of God. Some are like trodden path, some like rocky ground, others like a bed of thorns, so bed of thorns, and some are rich, like rich soil. So in each one of these images, there is a possibility of growth with the Word of God. Let me first start with the, the other way, you know, the rich soil. When people hear the Word of God, and as Jesus says, you know, they listen to it and understand, and they, when they persevere in what they hear, they really produce lots and lots of fruit. And the second thing in you know, on the seed among the thorns, when the word of God is given to them, you know, it is, you know, they receive it with the joy and they are so happy about it. But when the troubles of daily life and temptations come, then they begin to lose it. The seed that the sown on the rocky ground, you know, results in the word growing, you know, that is growing, but ultimately dies off when when they when their life becomes hard and hard, then they give it up. The last one is, is, the, is the seed that fell on the trodden path. And as there is no moisture, as there is no possibility of any growth, then the word of God, you know, the seed dies. So having said this one, Jesus says, those who are here, let them hear. It's very strange. What does it mean? You know, when I hear, lots of things I hear now, but my attention is only on what I'm talking at the moment. So when I hear with attention, with full listening, then I begin to understand the challenges of the message, what is being spoken to me, and what I am invited to do. So because I listen with the full faculty. And when I listen with the full faculty, I also listen to the content of it. So if I don't pay attention to what is, you know, what is surrounded by me, then it doesn't take any interest to me. So that's exactly Jesus says, okay, there are lots of people sitting around, and the same message is preach to all of them. Some hear it, some hear and listen it with lots of interest, and they try to put into action what they hear, and some, they are just there, but they don't really pay attention to that. And also they say the devil is the one which comes away and takes all the, the interest in them. So it is good to understand when the word of God comes to me, do I really listen with, with, with my full attention, with, with my full faculty? Because when I listen that, then I am challenged. I know where to take my direction because I know where I am standing in the, in the midst of my life. So dear friends, um, Jesus' you know, teachings are always an invitation and a challenge. When I take that invitation and challenge and work on them, then my life is going to be happy because I know this life-giving word is going to bring about lots of transformation in my life. So just think about God's word. Do I just hear or do I hear and listen and put them into action?
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the wine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Pray, my dear brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Receive, O Lord, we ask the praise of your people with the sacrificial offerings that through the intercession of Blessed Mary, the mother of your Son, no petition may go unanswered, no request be made in vain. We ask this through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, and to praise, bless, and glorify you in veneration of the Blessed Ever-Virgin Mary. For by the overshadowing of the Holy Spirit, she conceived your only begotten Son, and without losing the glory of virginity, brought forth into the world the eternal Lion, Jesus Christ our Lord. Through him the angels praise your majesty, dominions adore, and powers tremble before us. Heaven and the virtues of heaven and the blessed seraphim worship together with the exaltation. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in humble praise as we acclaim, holy. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the founder of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and he entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, when we eat this bread, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope, Timothy our Archbishop, Don his assistant, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, his spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be coerced eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, 
in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Peace of the risen Lord be with you all. Let's now offer each other God's peace. Peace to you all. So we pray, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Dear friends, behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not worthy that you should enter on my roof, but one is say the word, my soul shall be healed. May the body and blood of Christ keep me safe for eternal life.
Let us pray. As we receive this heavenly sacrament, we beseech, O Lord, your mercy, that we who rejoice in commemorating the Blessed Virgin Mary may, by imitating her, serve worthily the mystery of our redemption. We ask this through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you all, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Dear friends, go forth. The Mass is ended. Thank you and wish you all a good day. Thank you.